Hi students, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to do chapter 5, solving exponential equations. And the questions we'll be doing are from assignment 5.1. Let's start off by uh, looking at a motivational quote. And this is from Albert Einstein. And what did he say? Yes, it's not that I'm so smart. It's just that I stay with the problem longer. Right, let's look at question 3. Now, to solve exponential equations effectively, right, um, it will be good that you recap on some of the rules they'll be using from indices. So, what are they? Right, very commonly we'll be using this rule where you have the same base, same base. And if this is a multiplication, you just add the power. But usually what we'll be doing is uh, you'll be given in this format and then you need to break it up into two, two bases, two terms, sorry, not two bases, break it up into two terms of the same base. Right, so we'll be doing from, uh, most of the time, we'll be doing from left to right. Now, uh, the second rule will be this one here, okay, uh, where you need to uh, open up the brackets, where you just multiply the uh, exponents or the power. Then the third one is converting a, a negative exponent into a positive one. So these are the three very, very commonly used uh, rules in this is rules to solve exponential equations. All right, so let's look at how we do question three. So first step is to convert uh, brackets to multiplications to something that you're familiar with, right? You're familiar with two times three rather than two brackets three, right? Okay, so we change the bracket to times. So now the next step is, let's look at how we can simplify. Yes, so like what I've mentioned just now, uh, you do from left to right, so you need to convert it into two terms of the same base. So now we're talking about base two. Uh, convert it into two separate terms, uh, and then the power will be x for the first term, and then the other term will be negative one. So when you work backwards, is what you're getting will be x plus bracket negative 1, which give you x minus 1, which is what you have here. Okay. Right. And then, of course, uh, yeah, we just put them together. And the next step is uh, rearrange it. That means you put all the integers together. So 3 and 3 and 2 to the power negative 1 together. So you can use a calculator to evaluate the one that's highlighted in blue. If not, then that simply just give you 3 times half. Because 2 to the power of negative 1. Will just give you 1 over 2 to the power 1. Just give you half. So 3 times half will be just 3 over 2. Right, then the next step is that we're going to use substitution. Just going to substitute 2 to the power of x with the letter u or any other Oh, you can't. You have to use the letter U because in the questions specifically, you are told to substitute to the power X equals to U. Right, so you end up getting 3 over 2 times U equals to U plus 4. Right, and if you simplify it, you have 3 over 2U minus U equals to 4. 3 over 2U minus U means 3 over 2U minus 1U. So 3 over 2 minus 1 will be half. So half u equals to 4, u is equals to 8. So u is just a substituted value for 2 to the power of x. Here you need to find the values of x. Right, so finding u to u equals to 8 is not complete yet. Right, so you have to replace your u with 2 to the power of x. So therefore, 2 to the power of x is equals to 8. And you can write 8 as 2 to the power of 3. 
So now we have the same base, so obviously the exponent must be the same. So therefore, x is equal to 3. Right, now let's look at question 4. But first thing first, let's write down the three important rules that uh, we'll be using. All right, so what do we do? Yes, first thing first, uh, oh, this is not first thing first already. We already done the first thing first, let's recap. Second thing is to convert the bracket to the multiplication symbol. Okay, and then the next thing is to convert this uh, negative index to a positive one, which we'll be using, yes, the third rule. So that will give us 1 over 3 to the power of x. Alright, and then we're going to substitute 3 to the power of x, 3 to the power of x, with the letter u as stated in the questions. And you end up getting u equals to 4 minus 3 times 1 over u. Right, you can write 3 as 3 over 1 fractions, 3 over 1 times 1 over u. So that will give you u equals to 4 minus 3 over u. Basically, you just multiply your numerator, multiply your denominator. Then the next steps will be multiply by u on the left, on every term, multiply by u on every term. Because the purpose is to make 3 over u times u to get 3, to get a uh, whole number. Right, so u times u on the left side will give you u squared. So this one here will be 4 times u gives you 4u. 3 over u times u will just be 3 only. Alright, then you end up getting a quadratic equation where you can just factorize it. Alright, so remember that you are finding for the values of x. So u is just a substituted values. Right, so we are not uh, done here. Right, so when u is equal to 3, means 3 to the power x is equal to 3. Right, so you come, you have the same base 3, therefore the exponent will be the same. So x is equal to 1 will be 1 solution. Then the second one will be when u is equal to 1. Right, we are saying is 3 to the power of x is equal to 1. Right, and x has to be 0 because 3 to the power of 0 will give you 1. Okay, or another way of looking at it is just write 1 as 3 to the power of 0. Because 1 is very versatile. One, you can write 1 as 4 to the power of 0. Or you can write 1 as 3 to the power of 0. Something to the power of 0 gives you 1. Okay. Right, now let's look at question 6. It's a rather interesting question. You are asked if there's any solutions to the equations a to the power of x equals to 2. When a is 1. So what do we do with it? So basically, you just substitute a to be 1. And if you substitute a to be 1, then what do you get? You actually get 1 to the power of x. And 1 to the power of x will be equal to 1 for all real values of x. What does it mean? That means you can substitute any values of any values for x. Let's say you substitute x to be 1. So 1 to the power of 1 is 1. If you substitute x to be 2, 1 to the power of 2, that means 1 times 1 which gives you 1. If I substitute x to be 3, it means 1 times 1 times 3. Oh, sorry, 1 times 1 times 1. You will still get 1. So no matter what your values of x would be, you will always get 1 as the answer. And since 1 is not equal to 2, right, so there are no solutions to the equations. a to the power of x equals to 2 when a is equal to 1. Right, so this is how you explain your solutions to question 6. Right, let's look at question 9. By now, you we should have remembered the very three important uh, indices rules. Let's do a recap. The first one is when you have a base a to the power of m plus n, you can actually separate it into two terms of the same base, base a. And that is a to the power m times a to the power n. Or the second one, where you can just uh, open up brackets by multiplying the exponents. Exp another word for the power of indices is exponent. 
or you can uh, the third one is to convert a negative index to a positive one all right so step number one is to rewrite 16 to the power x as 16 as 4 squared so you have bracket 4 squared close bracket to the power of x where you can use the second rule to remove the brackets by multiplying the power then step number two is to change the brackets here to multiplication sign and step number three it's uh, to simplify 4 to the power of 2x again using not again sorry using rule 1 to break it into two terms of the same base which is base 4 here you will see that x plus x will give you your 2x right and then we're going to do some substitution so we're going to replace 4 to the power of x with any letters of your preference here i use letter a and you have the quadratic equations where you can factorize it and apply the ab product rule right so it will be 2a minus 1 equals to 0 or a minus 2 and you have two answer a is equals to half or a equals to 2 but that's not the answer yet because we are finding the values of x not a right let's continue with what we have done in the earlier slide so we found a to be half or a to be 2 now so a is actually a substitute of values for 2 to the power of a sorry a is a substitute of value for 4 to the power of x if you refer to the earlier slides Right, so here what we're going to do is we're going to express the left and the right at uh, base 2 to some power. So 4 will be 2 to the power of 2. And half will be, you apply uh, the third rule, where we convert uh, half to be a uh, to the power negative 1 all right then now we have the same base 2 on both sides so 2x is equals to negative 1 x equals to negative half that will be one answer so the second answer is when a is equals to 2 right so 4 to the power of x will be equals to 2 so we apply the same uh, skill here express both sides as base 2 the power of some power and then uh, compare the exponent so 2x equals to 1 x will be half so in these questions there are two answer x can be half or negative half right as usual let's write down the three indices rules that very popularly used to solve exponential equation all right so there's something we can simplify here um, something that we all of us know and that is square root 9 is equal to 3 so that will give you 3 to the power of 2x minus 3 to the power of x plus 2 equals to 3 to the power of x minus 9 so I've just circled some terms in using green those circled one you can use the first rule to break it up into uh, two terms of the same base the purpose of breaking up into two terms of the same base so that we can do substitution so if you don't break it up then uh, you can't really tell what terms to be substitute for so after breaking everything up you know you can see that we can substitute 3 to the power of x with the letter a and this is what we get Again, we we'll end up getting a quadratic equation where you can just factorize it. Right, and again, a is just a substitute of values for 3 to the power of x. Right, so anything uh, 3 to the power of 0 gives you 1. So therefore, x is equal to 0 when a is equal to 1. 
another way of looking at it is you can actually just write 1 as 3 to the power of 0. 1 is very versatile. Okay, 4 to the power of 0 would be 1, 5 to the power of 0 is 1, 6 to the power of 0 is 1. So depending on what base you have on the left hand side, okay, if you have base 3, then 3 to the power of 0 will be will be equals to 1. If you're solving for 4 to the power of x, then the right hand side is just 4 to the power of 0. Right, question 11 is a slightly more challenging question. Challenging in the sense because you're given uh, two equations with two unknowns and you're asked to solve it right. Um, but the skills apply is still the same as what we have done previously. Right, basically we just need to apply substitution here using the methods of substitution and then also expressing uh, the number, uh, like for example, 64, 4 and 16, you can express it as base 4. Right, let's look at the first equation. Okay, so we have the same base on the left, on the right. Then of course the exponent will be the same. And here what we're going to do is we're going to make y the subject. Okay, and with that we're going to substitute into the second equations. Okay, uh, similarly here for this, we have done enough to know that this one we can break it up into two terms which is uh, 3 to the power of x times 3 to the power of negative 2 and change the brackets to times something familiar that uh, familiar to you all right if this bracket here kind of complicates you then just change it to times and likewise for this also you can break it up using a to the power of m plus n okay break it up into two terms of the same base And then break it up some more for this. So it's quite interesting for solving exponential equation. You just keep breaking down, breaking down into the simplest form. And then you just, next thing, just use substitution. Right, so let's continue with what we have stopped at the last slide. So we actually get a uh, equations of this kind. So what we're going to do is just to multi change, change uh, because we have some fraction here, 1 over 27 is a fraction, and then 1 over 9 is a fraction. So what we're going to do is we're just going to convert all this to fractions. Right. So when, when you have done something like that, all you need to do is just multiply the numerator, and then multiply the denominator. So that will give you a squared. a times a is a squared times 1. So that will be a squared over 27 equals to 4a over 9 minus 1. Right, then the next thing is that we're going to convert it to a uh, whole number. So if you look at the biggest, uh, look at all the denominator, there are only two of them anyway. Right, the biggest number is 27, so we're going to multiply with the biggest number on both sides. And then you end up getting quadratic equations again, where you can just factorize it. And again, bear in mind that a is just a substitutive values. So when a is equal to 3, right, it's a substitutive values for 3 to the power of x. So x is 1. Okay, also bear in mind that there are two unknowns we need to find. We need to find the values of x, also the values of y. So after finding x equals to 1, you have to substitute into your equation 1 to find the values of y. Right, so here when x is equal to 1, y is equal to negative 1, there will be one pair of answer. The second answer will be when a is equal to 9. That is when you get x equals to 2. Similarly, substitute x equals to 2 into your first equation. Uh, the equations were labeled 1, if you refer to the previous slide, which is y equals to 2x minus 3. So substitute x to be 2, so that will give you y equals to 1. So the second pair of answer is x equals to 2, y equals to 1. Alright, let's come to the last question. Um, the last question is slightly harder than the rest because it involves more than one concept. The earlier questions that we have done uh, will involve using the rules of indices to express the uh, exponential term into two terms of the same base. In this question here, it involves another concept we've learned earlier, 
in the chapter of quadratic equations and functions. Right, so if you look at the questions, it, you were told that this particular exponential equation has only one value of x. So what does one value of x means to you? It means there's only one solution, right? If you were to recall, it means there's only one solution. And one solution means that it's only one intersection point on the x-axis. So it means that you only have two real repeater roots. If you were to draw the diagram, uh, it's, if you were to recall, it's this, something like that, where you can only have two real repeater roots. And that is when the value of discriminants equals to zero. So you have to keep this concept in mind because we need to use that uh, later on, right? So what is the first step that we need to do? Is the first step it's basically just right express that as uh, two uh, as two terms of the same base. And then again break it out, break down this guy again into two terms of the same base, and then we're going to apply substitution. So for this whole of uh, exercise 5.1, we we have been using mainly substitutions to solve exponential equations. Right, so again you end up using a quadratic equation. So this is slightly different from what we have done earlier. Because what we have done earlier is with the quadratic equation, we could just factorize it. But here we have one unknown. And this is the unknown a that we need to find. Right, we can't, we, you, you can't factorize it with the unknown a. So therefore, we have to you apply this concept here that we talked about beginning of uh, beginning of the, the, the sessions, right? So from there, uh, let's write down the values of a, which is the coefficients of b squared, that is 2. The coefficients of b, it's negative a, and the constant term will be 2. Um, so if you are quite confused about how to find the values of a, b, c, right, if you are familiar with the, the variable x squared, then you just convert it to convert, change the b to x, and then from there you can see that the coefficients of x squared will be 2, the coefficients of x is negative a, and plus 2 will be a constant term. All right, so you plug into your b squared minus 4ac equals to 0, you will have two values for a, but not, not both of them are accepted. Why is that so? Let's see what happens when a is equal to 4. So after finding the values of a, you will have to substitute back into this quadratic equation, right? And then you can factorize it, and from there you can get the values of b to be 1, right? But again, b is a substituted value for this. So when b is equal to 1, to the power x is equal to 1, so therefore x is equal to 0. How about the second answer when a is equal to negative 4? What happened? So likewise, you substitute into your quadratic equation, you factorize it, and then you get b equals to negative 1. But b is a substituted value for 2 to the power x, and then you realize that mm, it's not possible. Why? Because it's not possible to have uh, equations when your left-hand side is a positive value and your right-hand side is a negative. You won't have any values of x in this case here, so it's not possible to solve for a value of x in this kind of uh, equation. So therefore, the only possible values for a is 4. And when a is 4, the only possible values for x is 0. All right, so that ends the whole assignment 5.1. This is a relatively short assignment, right? Uh, it's pretty interesting also. So please, uh, if you can't solve any of the problems, remember what Albert Einstein said. Uh, it's not because he's smart, but because he stayed with the problems longer.